Sure. I saw, I saw a uh, news story the other day about this 93-year-old dude that uh, finished a five-year degree and graduated university. It was like a good news story. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, everyone on the whole panel on the show just kept saying, like, oh, it goes to show, it's never too late. <laughs> I, I don't have a degree myself. I'm pretty sure that getting one when you're 93 years old is probably the definition of too late. <laughs> I understand what was going through that guy's mind, you know, like that. He gets 88 years old and go, can't keep partying forever. <laughs> really gonna have to get my shit together sometime. <laughs> what was he thinking at graduation? Was he just like, oh, now I've got a qualification, I'll finally be able to send my 70-year-old kids to a good school. <laughs> Alright, as your final act, uh, I really love this dude every time I see him. Uh, so put your hands together and make a lot of noise. And this guy, <laughs> Hey, my name is Henry He. I'm from China. Uh, I haven't been in Australia for long, but people have been telling me that I speak fluent English. Well, I was kind of expecting a round of applause here, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I've got to tell you, the reason I speak fluent English is because I tried very hard in China to learn English. I've got to tell you, learning English in China is not easy at all. I have to watch two and a half men seven days a week. I'm going to tell you another thing is uh, learning English in China in a school is particularly hard because the teacher there would only tend to teach you the big words. I still remember the first series of words I learned in China were all uh, in relation to diseases. <laughs> they were all spectacular. I remember the words I learned was uh, cancer, Tuberculosis and HIV. Wow. That actually created a problem. The first time I went to see a doctor here, I actually didn't know how to describe my symptom. All I can do is pull out all the words I've learned in relation to diseases. <laughs> and at the end of the session, the GP, the GP wrote me a referral letter to the funeral services. <laughs> Tough. But look, that's the problem when you learn English in school in China. You know, uh, you may not have a problem to talk about the Newton's three laws in of motion, but you do have a problem to find out where the nearest toilet is. <laughs> so generally, the question would be, uh, where's the nearest toilet? But for a Chinese guy who had always of all of his uh, education history in China, it usually goes like this. I would like to dispose urine extracted from my kidney. You tell me where I pee. That's what we call good English. <coughs> right, and another thing uh, what Chinese did was uh, uh, that we misspell a lot of words. I used to work in a uh, radio station, and we have this um, we have this uh, staff toilet, which uh, not open to the public. It has a sign in Chinese that says no public access. But when it translates to English, it actually misspelled. It says no pubic access. <laughs> I mean, it would be very hard for me to go to the toilet if you don't want my uh, pubic area to enter the toilet. <laughs> It's not impossible, it's just I won't be able to deliver that long. <laughs> well, <clears throat> learning English by yourself is actually a very confusing process. For example, you have a lot of similar words. One, one, one word, uh, it takes me a long time to figure out differences, is uh, well, solicitor and soliciting. <laughs> well, it turns out difference is quite big. <laughs> you know, solicitor causes far more damage to a relationship than solicitor. <laughs> and um, as a Chinese, we do a lot of things different, differently. One thing we Chinese did was we like to pay off things. We buy a car, we pay it off. We buy an apartment, we pay it off. We buy a house, we pay it off. We apply for home loan, we pay it off the next day. 
<laughs> Just because we're so worried, we're gonna miss the repayments. <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, after I um, arrived in Australia, I realized that there are a lot of differences between the Australian and we Chinese. One thing I've noticed is the way you look at ecology. Uh, the way you look at ecology is very different from way you, how we look at ecology. For example, if Australian, if someone in Australia find a new species, you guys always tend to ask questions. You guys always tend to ask questions like, uh, uh, what do they eat? How do they survive? What's the position in the ecological system? Whereas, if we find a new species, we ask very different questions. We ask questions like, uh, how do we cook it? <laughs> Does it taste good? <laughs> But well, this is the reason I really love my neighbor. She's got a nice puppy. <laughs> but I still haven't had a chance to taste that puppy. Because <laughs> I still, still haven't figured a way to make it look like an accident. <laughs> I've been in Australia for almost six months. I really miss home, but I hate going back. The reason I um, I could not going back is because, uh, um, you know, every time I um, every time I try to pick up the uh, souvenir to bring back to China, I have to look around, and it's very hard for me to find a souvenir that is actually not made in China. <laughs> Everywhere I go, it's like. A, Made in China, made in China, made in China, woo! Bangladesh. <laughs> That's not. That feels so Australian. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Henry He. Thank you!